I would say as Enlightenment rationalists, which includes most liberals, but also moderate conservatives, basically anybody who believes in rationality, um, have left an opening for unprincipled people like Alex Jones or like President Trump to exploit. Um, the great German sociologist Max Weber, I mentioned him a couple of times in the book as well, referred to the disenchantment of the world in an essay called Science as a Vocation that he, uh, or rather a lecture he gave in 1917. And what he meant by that was that the Enlightenment uh, had taken away a lot of the enchantment and mystery and depth and meaning uh, from the world and left us with logic and facts, essentially. And that's part of this problem that because liberals are you know descended from the enlightenment and believe in science and rationality those are obviously strengths but it can also come across as spiritually and aesthetically empty and that leaves this gap this hunger that i think basically we all have to find a deeper meaning in life than just the numbers just the data mm -hmm. right which as i said earlier is why we listen to music and and like art and poetry or or are attracted to cultures that seem to still maintain some kind of connection to nature and tradition. Um, and the trouble is, by not filling that need, by, by being overly rational, we've left it kind of open for exploitation by demagogues like Trump or by uh, dishonest media outlets. Um, and those media outlets have been greatly enabled by the rise of technology because it used to be you know, there were only a few major television networks and, and print publications, and now we have hundreds and hundreds of TV channels and an infinite number, in effect, uh, of Internet mm -hmm. channels, uh, which has enabled any, you know, dishonest uh, or insane person to spread whatever fantasies or lies they care to. But part of the responsibility for that, I would say, is that by becoming too much stuck in our heads, basically, we've left uh, a gap there um, that's going to be filled by somebody. And sometimes it's filled, you know, by poets and artists or genuinely uh, well-meaning spiritual leaders. But sometimes it's filled by con artists. And mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what, part of what we're seeing now. It's part of what you're talking about. I remember when I was a little girl, um, was when I was raised Catholic and there was a time when the masses were all said in Latin and then there was a change and the mass was going to be said in English. And I can remember people being upset by that because they said that when they understood the words, somehow some of the magic of the mass had gone away for them. And I always found that incredibly puzzling, you know, sort of like, you know, so when it was Latin sort of mumbo jumbo, there was a there was a, a, a high spiritual feeling that they got than when they knew what the words actually meant and what was actually being said. It sounds oh, a, a little bit point. like that, like what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you think about the King James uh, Bible, for example, versus the modern um, idiomatic translations of the Bible, which are written in modern American English, for example, some of them, I actually prefer the King James version of the Bible because I feel that the rhythm of the poetry just it just works much better. It's just it just works better as poetry. That doesn't make any sense. But you know, poetry <laughs> does poetry doesn't make much sense. And this gets to how language is used. Um, language can be used to make logical propositions, and we can analyze whether the premises are you know factual, and then we can analyze whether the logic uh, is sound. But language is also used to write poetry or songs or um, liturgies in the various world religions. And one way of picturing the divide I'm talking about is imagine walking into a Catholic church service or a mosque or, a, you know, a Jewish temple or any uh, religious service and, and, and yelling out, there is no scientific evidence that any of this stuff is true. I think it's pretty easy to see that that's certainly defensible from a scientific point of view, but it would be a very inappropriate use of language. And you'd kind of be missing the point because those folks are not in there talking science. They're pursuing some higher form of truth. Now, as your, call, your caller would probably argue, well, there is no higher form of truth. They're fooling themselves. But they don't believe that. And they feel that they are 